It was already known that repeated exposure to conflict and violence, including witnessing and experiencing housing demolition, combined with Israel's siege of Gaza since 2007, is associated with high levels of psychological distress amongst Palestinians. Indeed, the United Nations Security Council Resolution 2712 expressed its deep concern that the disruption of access to education has a dramatic impact on children and that conflict has a lifelong effect on their physical and mental health. This disruption and its dramatic impact on children must be considered in particular and in the context of the number of Palestinian students and educators who have been killed, 4,037 and 209 respectively, and wounded estimated at 7,259. And the number of Palestinian schools having been damaged or destroyed, 352, or 74% of the schools in the whole of Gaza. Medical professionals assess that the health effects on all Palestinian children, women, men, older people, people with disabilities, and people marginalized identities are immense. An emergency coordinator for Medicine Sans Frontier interviewed on her return from five weeks in Gaza described. It's even worse in reality than it looks. It's the amount of suffering is just something incomparable. It's really unbearable. I'm speechless when I try and think of the future of these children. Generations of children who will be handicapped, who will be traumatized. The very children in our mental health program are telling us that they would rather die and continue living in Gaza now. The extreme levels of bombardment and lack of any safe areas are also causing severe mental trauma in the Palestinian population in Gaza. Even before the latest onslaught, Palestinians in Gaza suffered severe trauma from prior attacks. 80% of Palestinian children experienced higher levels of emotional distress, demonstrating bedwetting, 79%, and reactive mutism, 59%, and engaging in self-harm, 59%, and suicidal thoughts, 55%. 11 weeks of relentless bombardment, displacement, and loss will necessarily have led to a further increase in those figures particularly for the estimated tens of thousands of Palestinian children who have lost at least one parent and those who are the sole surviving members of their families. For the families who remain intact or partially intact, quote, it's about doing everything you can so your child doesn't realise that you've lost control. There are reports of Israeli forces using white phosphorus in densely populated areas in Gaza. As the World Health Organization describes, even small amounts of white phosphorus can cause deep and severe burns penetrating even through bone and capable of reigniting after initial treatment. There are no functioning hospitals in the north of Gaza in particular, such that injured persons are reduced to waiting to die, unable to seek surgery or medical treatment beyond first aid dying slow, agonizing deaths from their injuries or from resultant infections. Large numbers of Palestinian civilians, including children, have reportedly been arrested, blindfolded, forced to undress and remain outside in cold weather before being forced onto trucks and taken to unknown locations. Medics and first responders in particular have been repeatedly detained by Israeli forces, with many being detained incommunicado at unknown locations. Videos published by Israeli media on Christmas Day appeared to show hundreds of Palestinians rounded up inside Al Yarmouk football stadium in Gaza City, including children, older people, and persons with disabilities being forced to strip to their underwear in degrading conditions. United Nations Office 
for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, or UN OCHA, reports video footage showing bruises and burns on the bodies of detainees. Images of mutilated and burned corpses alongside videos of armed attacks by Israeli soldiers are reportedly circulated in Israel via a telegram channel called 72 Virgins Uncensored, billed as exclusive content from the Gaza Strip. <laughs> 